to try and show how much time it's actually going to take to do this job. One of the things that I found on YouTube is that, that the videos are very helpful, but they're all about five, ten minutes long. From time to time, you'll get full videos. So then, what I'm going to do is I have these clocks. I'm going to put them just in different places around the vehicle. And as I video, I'll periodically switch back to the clocks if I run into a problem. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'll switch back to the clock so you can get a sense for how long it takes to even do the problem solving. <laughs> Hopefully there are not a lot of those. Okay, I'm going to remove a 17 millimeter bolt to remove the sway bar link. Remove the rear bolt. Pull that out. Right here. Just move that out. And then remove this, which is also 17 millimeter. Swing it over. This whole part comes out. I'm gonna put it in a bag so that the parts are all together. So we're gonna take this sway bar link out. Okay, so we're gonna slide this out. And we can see that it's stopped by the uh, tie rod. So we're gonna go ahead and remove the tie rod and then go ahead and since we have to remove it anyway, we're gonna go ahead and this will be easy to just slide right out. And when we put it in, we'll put this in first before reconnecting the tie rod. So right now, tie rod's coming off. All right, we're gonna use this uh, ball joint separator to uh, separate the tie rod in from the ball joint. Slide it on. And we're going to tighten this down. And it slipped right below the, the boot. So we're not going to tear the boot. And we don't have to hammer it with a pickle fork. And uh, this should pop right off. It's going to be a loud pop. All right, there we go. We're gonna swing this up. Tie rods out of the way. And we can see that the knuckle freely swings, swings around the ball joint. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna remove this nut here, which I think is 17 millimeter. 17 millimeter. We're going to try to use this guy again. We're going to try and put it on, but you can't hardly see that. That's on two. That's on three. There we go. All right, it worked. How about that? So at this point, the ball joint is disconnected from the steering knuckle. So the plan now is to simply lift the steering knuckle off the ball joint. And then we're going to swing it out of the way. We have access to this nut to, re to loosen this, um, to take the strut off. Also, as you can see, now that we've removed the tie rod, <clears throat> we can now remove the, the stabilizer link. Comes right out. Okay. Okay. It's supposed to be 116 pounds. Okay, 
This was only supposed to be on 116 pounds. That is awfully tight if this doesn't get it off. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my breaker bar and see if we can't loosen that nut. All right, there we go. All right, okay. So we broke it loose and one of the things we did is put a wrench on the back side to hold the, to hold the bolt, which is a 17 millimeter. The front nut uh, on the strut is uh, 19 millimeter. And now is a good time to put your match marks on your camera adjusting bolt up front and that's what I'm going to do now and so we just put our match marks on the camera adjusting there you go so I lowered the jack to relieve the pressure off of the control arm and now we should have just knock this uh, knock this bolt right out comes right out hey right, it might need to get a Work it out. There you go. We're gonna put these together. Take the steering knuckle off the ball joint. Just comes right off. Difference. And this is just so it doesn't fall because right now I only have a couple of bolts that are holding it. And I'm going to go ahead and remove those bolts now. Let me just pry it out a little. And it just comes right out. Grab it with your hand. Pull it out. There we go. And remove it. We're gonna lift a little and slide forward and this whole arm should come off. We're gonna go ahead right now. This shouldn't be in the way. As you can see, it's loose. There's nothing behind it. It should slide right off. We're gonna go ahead and lower the jack just so that it doesn't prevent the uh, control arm from sliding out. There we go that you saw knocking in the previous video and when you shake the vehicle this section clunks and also you can see here that this bushing is cracked so it squeaks the car vibrates and when I come to a stop you can hear squeaking pulling into a driveway or a short turn you can hear squeaking and going over bumps between both bushings this one and this one it clunks and it vibrates cluck, 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 cluck. and so the thing the solution <clears throat> was these are the bushing that needs to be replaced this and this big bushing can be purchased by itself this big bushing these are about sixty dollars each so if this is your only problem you can simply loosen this nut and this comes right off take these two bolts out However, if you need this smaller bushing as well, you can buy them, but it is quicker and cheaper to get an entire control arm that comes with this bushing already pressed in, and it comes with this bushing as well. And the cost for an entire control arm is only slightly more than the cost for just one of these bushings or the cost to have one of these smaller camber bushings pressed in. And for that reason, I decided to purchase an entire control arm. I got the control arm from Mevotech, and this is what it looks like. Control arm. This is the old control arm. 
and one of the things you want to make sure is that all the parts line up, everything matches in place, everything looks good here, bushing looks good. So now what needs to happen is this guy has to be torqued down and the torque spec on this is, so the torque spec for this is 101 foot pounds. So what I'm going to do is already just snugged up. I'm going to go ahead and snug this up to the vehicle, snug this up, leave this as is. So I'm going to snug this up to the vehicle, snug this up to the vehicle. This I need to put my ball joint on. So I'm going to go ahead and put the ball joint on once this is attached to the vehicle. And once it's attached to the vehicle, I will go ahead and torque it down. Once it's torqued down, then I'll set the steering knuckle on top. And it just slides right in. And we're going to go ahead and take the camber adjusting bolts. You can see it's got the match mark. We're going to slide it back through. So what I'm doing now is I just align the match marks. You can see they're aligned. Take a 19 millimeter. And I also, this is a 22 millimeter that I have on the back of this cam bolt that I use to turn whichever way I need to turn it to get this, uh, to get this uh, adjusting cam lined up with the match marks. And now that it's lined up, I'm gonna just go ahead now just lined up and just snug it down okay snug down all right and so now what we'll do we're gonna go to the back and we're gonna torque down we're gonna torque down these guys so torque 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 come back to this torque come to this torque and then the control arm job will be on. And then the only thing that's remaining is to put the ball joint on here and then reattach the steering knuckle, put the tire on, take it for a ride. 101 foot pounds. This is for the outside caster bushing bolt. 101 foot pounds. Check your factory service manual. There we go. 101 foot pounds. Now we want 44 to the inside. This goes to 44 foot pounds, and you should hear a, a beep when we get to 44 foot pounds. We're 45. I know that's not exactly, but I'm gonna call it a day right there. We're gonna do this height adjustment sensor. We're gonna go ahead and, and reattach it. Now the last thing here is to go ahead and uh, tighten this up to 127 foot pounds. The match mark should still be lined up now that I've torqued the back, they're still lined up. We're about two and a half hours into it and the arm is back on. There we go. 27 foot pounds. 
There we go. Tark down. Everything on the back is tarked down. This is down as it's gonna get. Now I just need to go ahead and torque down this uh, this uh, strut to the to the control arm, and then put the ball joint on, and that's it. Okay. Okay. So this is the new ball joint. It's a ball joint from Beck Ornley. This ball joint actually came off with the control arm. I didn't bother to disconnect it from the control arm since I was replacing the control arm, so I didn't want to take the time to do that. So we just want to make sure this new Beck only part matches the old part, which it looks like it does. Everything lines up just about right. When you put it on, I guess you could spin it around, but when you put it on, it helps to make sure that this piece the piece for the tie rod is the face in the front of the vehicle because of course that's where your tie rod is. That's gonna slip down in there and you're gonna torque that down. This is gonna be 119 foot pounds. All right, so we're gonna move the knuckle out of the way. I'm gonna slide it in. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to get a jack and just lift the control arm up a little so that we can line up the stabilizer bar and the stabilizer end link. We can go ahead and run this uh, bolt and uh, nut through and we're going to torque these both down to 41 foot pounds. So what should happen now is as the control arm moves up just enough for us to line it up. Okay, so we'll put the washer on. Okay, so the plan now, we're going to put a little thread locker, a little blue thread locker on the bolts that hold the, the uh, lower ball joint onto the steering knuckle. And we're going to torque these down to 83 foot-pounds, 83. This is the last thing that will go in, that's 43. And that's it. Three foot pounds. I keep going through these gloves, and on these you want to be careful not to over tighten them because the steering knuckle is aluminum. And if you over tighten or over torque and you strip those out, you basically find yourself having to get a new steering knuckle. The last thing that has to be done is the tie rod put back on and then torque down, and then the job will be done. It's taking about four hours to do the job. Everything is back together. Everything is torqued down. And the last thing to do is to uh, install the wheel, take it for a ride, and see if that did the trick. Okay, so this is what we wind up with once the job is done. Match marks lined up about as best they're going to be. New control arm is in, as we can see. Everything has been torqued down. Four hours, and that's with filming and taking breaks for looking for tools, water, etc. And uh, so I hope this video helps someone to do this job themselves. Goodness knows YouTube has certainly helped me. This was a fairly easy job. It just takes some time. And uh, I, I definitely think it's a, a DIY job. Again, hope this video helps.